Hey, kid. Oh my gosh, please help! Don't worry, it's me, Dr. Alan Grant. I'll help you out, don't worry, kid. Who? Uh, excuse me, it's, it's me, classic main character, Dr. Alan Grant, from Jurassic Park? I thought dinosaurs were the main characters. Anyway, please help, because there's a T-Rex thing after me. I mean, usually this is the part where everyone cheers and gets excited to see someone like me. And I'm 10. I was born in 2012 for your information. I mean, sure. But seriously, I'm a famous character. What? An Indiana Jones ripoff? Just please help. Ah! Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Me either. I'm a popular character. Everybody knows me. That's it, fine. You can go have your fun. No, wait! No! I don't want to die from something so bad looking! Well, you should have thought of that before forgetting famous Jurassic Park protagonist, Dr. Alan Grant. No! And we're back. So you thought I was extinct. So the end of the Jurassic Park era is here. It, it, it's been a long journey. It's been like 20 something, almost 30 years. Holy, f 90s are 30 years ago? So Jurassic World Dominion's the third of the Jurassic World movies, the new rebooted series from the Jurassic Park franchise, which is also the accumulation of the original Jurassic Park movies. So it's all coming to a head in this one, supposedly. As they merge the original Jurassic Park cast with the newer Jurassic World cast, along with Colin Trevero returning to the director's chair. So it has a lot riding on its shoulders, almost being an Avengers Endgame event for the entire franchise. Now, I grew up loving the Jurassic Park movies. I mean, being a dinosaur kid myself, I had dinosaur encyclopedias everywhere, knew all sorts of random tidbits of these creatures that lived such a long time ago. I knew so many freaking Greek Greek, Latin names. Growing up, you'd almost think I'd be possessed by some type of dinosaur demon or something. <laughs> My grandparents had Jurassic Park 3 on VHS, as well as the original, but I started out with Jurassic Park 3, and let me tell you, that movie blew me away as a kid with all these dinosaurs running around and people getting eaten. It was like a little dinosaur loving kid's dream. It introduced me to my favorite dinosaur, the Spinosaurus, which is a crazy, larger than T-Rex carnivore. And funny enough, when I finally got to the original Jurassic Park, I think I had to leave that day really early, but it took so long to get for them to get to the actual dinosaurs. I was like, why are they just talking around a dinner table? Of course, years later, those discussions became much more interesting and stuff. The way they developed characters in that movie is been unmatched since with any of the other following films. But still, I wanted those dinosaurs, man. But yeah, I love Jurassic Park, love Jurassic Park 3. I, I like Lost World all right. And then Jurassic World comes out and that was, that blew my mind seeing all those dinosaurs again. Of course, I went and Spinosaurus come back. What, what, whatever, Jurassic Park fans hate that thing now for some reason. And they beat up their favorite dinosaur, the most generic carnivore dinosaur there is. But it was a fun time and a great return to form, I felt like. And then the sequel came out, Fallen Kingdom, and that kind of fell apart. <laughs> they introduced too many weird elements in that, like cloning people, which, <laughs> come to find out, they've had this idea of cloning humans and dinosaurs together for a long time and like past scripts and stuff where they're gonna have like dinosaur human hybrids and stuff. I'm like, thank goodness those didn't become movies, am I right? I mean, Actually, you know, those would be cool to just see, but still, it's like, that's like such a dumb blot. But at the end of Falling Kingdom, they, they, they break everything away, they break the fences, they break down the barriers, oh my gosh. They, they, they give up the biggest plot to us of all time. That this is about to be the actual Jurassic World. The dinosaurs are out everywhere in the real world, we're about to get an actual legit Jurassic World. The world has become Jurassic Park. Which leads into this movie, which should be like the best movie ever. Even Colin Trevorrow, the guy that was behind the first Jurassic World and then helped produce the second one but didn't direct, he was like, finally, I can make the movie I've always wanted to make with this one. So this should be like the greatest movie of all time, right? Well, let's start with positives and what I liked about this movie. I liked that they brought back the original cast, which I loved seeing Alan Grant on the screen again and it really gave me goosebumps and chills. Well, it did give me that, but... Yes, I expressed an emotion. It was good seeing these characters back after all these years and actually in a movie together instead of just a few coming back at a time per movie. 
And I absolutely loved all the actors slipping back into their old roles. Jeff Goldblum's character, Ian Malcolm especially, has like a real uh, scene-stealing quality to him throughout the movie. It's like, he's so freaking hilarious. Like, sometimes you're wondering if he's just improv on set or just talking about his everyday, like, an everyday occurrence. Because he's like just perfect as Ian Malcolm just being this like very like bonkers positive thinking scientist and sam neill and laura dern are great at inhabiting these characters again it almost feels like they're just back like years later like they never changed from the original jurassic park and jurassic park 3. i thought it was great to see the two casts interacting like with each of them bringing their own special expertise to the situation chris pratt's characters like raptor taming which if this motion isn't ingrained in your mind from the last two Jurassic World movies, it'll definitely be in this one because he does it quite a few times. Like, you can make a drinking game out of it, honestly. But it's great to see all of them interact with one another, new and old, being paired together. And the new additions to the film, Dewanda White's character, uh, Kayla Watts, is a welcome addition as well as... All right, how do you pronounce this one? Mama Duethi. Mama Duethi's character, Ramses. Both are welcome additions and bring something to the table. And then the movie's villain, Lewis Dotson, played by Campbell Scott, a.k.a. Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man's dad. Rich Parker from the Amazing Spider-Man movies. He's a hit or miss for me. Like, the first time I found he was, like, a little weird at certain points, like, cringy. But then on my second viewing... On my second viewing, I liked him a lot because he is weird. Because <laughs> he just has this, like, apathetic nature to human beings. He gives that character that type of vibe. And whenever he has to socially interact, he kind of freaks out, which I found pretty hilarious. It's still odd that it's this character that showed up in Jurassic Park, you know, the one that gave Wayne Knight's character the secret embryo container thing. I don't know. I had a hard time seeing this rogue, like, dealer type guy trying to get Wayne Knight's character into the Jurassic Park to mess it up and stuff becoming this high level super intelligent guy i don't know it's just hard for me to buy but i mean he was a blank slate character so they could have done anything with him so i guess it's not a problem and a few more positives i thought there were some amazing visuals in this movie and greatly well done sequences two of them include a certain parachute scene and a scene in a swamp i thought was really well done and was great at building that intense and putting the audience in the character's shoes. And I like that they brought in certain like obscure, less known niche dinosaurs into the mix. Cause you know, they've done so many more famous dinosaurs already. They got to throw in some more like lesser known dinosaurs and they got to do different sequences and stuff. And that was really fun to see. I like that they get to represent. Like several of those dinosaurs I didn't think would ever come to the big screen. And before I get into my biggest fundamental flaw with this movie, I'll get into some other things that I thought were like a little lackluster. I felt like the pace was a little too quick at certain points, especially the first part of the film, the first half or so. It feels like they're just cutting to events a lot and don't really give it time to breathe. And so you don't really get to have good like atmosphere building moments and character development moments, at least early on. So the movie feels like it's moving along a little too fast, but then at certain points it slowed down on certain parts that I found a little too boring or irrelevant. And so at certain points it felt like the pace was too quick and then too slow, which is kind of weird to think about now that I say it out loud. Some might not pick up on this and so I hope I don't ruin this for anybody and they start like picking up on it and noticing it too, but this movie specifically, it felt like at certain points, like characters and actors were on set at different times and it feels like there's a lot of like cuts to like mid shots and stuff where it's just, it feels like they're not in the, all in the same room. And this is doubled down whenever they're not like focusing and working on with stuff in the environment. Like there's several scenes where it felt like they should have been like doing wides and zooming out and stuff, but it was just like quick cuts to different characters to hide that they were not all on set at the same time. But that's just the editor and me from working on these videos and stuff. Most might not pick up on that. That's just something that got a little under my skin because it felt a little wonky and a little weird. I don't, it's weird to explain. It just felt like certain things and certain environments were like not tangible because you didn't like get to see it and stuff because they're just cutting between different actors. Some minor things I felt like certain humorous moments fell flat and there's a little too much pandering to the audience with certain moments that are like swelling music it's like, oh, look, it's the gang all together. This is like the Avengers of Jurassic Park. But I felt like it came off a little too try hard. All right, now the biggest problem with the movie for me, all right, as a dinosaur kid growing up, as a lover of dinosaurs, as a lover of Jurassic Park, as a lover of the idea that this movie was pushing for the longest time, which was it's Jurassic World now. The world is Jurassic World. 
There's dinosaurs everywhere, just showing up in society. You know, you could go camping. There was apparently a short film I have not seen where people are camping in the woods and then get attacked by dinosaurs and have to survive. That's like the coolest concept ever. Just like dinosaurs in everyday modern society. People trying to survive and stuff. That's the most beautiful movie. It's the most craziest movie. It sounds like the perfect movie. And Colin Trevorrow. The director really hones in that this is the type of movie he's always wanted to make. The marketing sets up that it's going to be this movie. And then you see the movie. The two main storylines they decided to make this movie about could literally exist without dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are not part of the two main plots in this movie. Why would they do that? Again, people might not pick up on this. There's like, you know, there are dinosaurs in the movie at certain points, but the two main plots could be done in different science fiction movies. Like, am I going crazy? You set up for the greatest alley-oop of film history with dinosaurs everywhere. And you focus in on two plots that have nothing to do with dinosaurs. The dinosaurs become the second act. They become the side characters to their own movie. Like, am I going crazy? Is this, whose idea was this? So this aspect just fundamentally, like, damages the movie for me, like. I, it just it just ruined it for me. Like I recognize it's still like a fun movie. It's still like I will rewatch it. I like it better than the last one. Like there's a lot of great dinosaurs parts. But for them to do that to the story is just plain dumb. There's a good stretch in the second quarter of this movie where not many dinosaurs are even really mentioned. That none really show up until a certain action scene, and then the movie for a little bit becomes a random action thriller, kind of like almost in the vein of one of the new Fast and the Furious movies where they're like trying to hunt down a person. It almost feels like for a second that they wanted to make a little spy movie or like action thriller movie where they're hunting someone down and have nothing to do with dinosaurs, but then, you know, there's ended up being dinosaurs in the scene, but it doesn't feel like a Jurassic Park movie. <laughs> and to really quickly touch on the spoiler, like I promise I won't be long, it'll be like, Two minutes max. It, it'll be just a few spoilers and then we can call it a day. Shoot, I almost forgot tradition. Okay, quick spoilers, quick spoilers, I promise. I promise I'll keep my cool, I promise. They set up a world full of dinosaurs and they decide to take it back to an island. They decide to take it back to an island. You know what we haven't done before in Jurassic Park? Set the whole movie on an island. So half the movie, and they just go back to what all the other Jurassic Park movies were about. Dinosaurs on an island, and not dinosaurs in the world. Look into the beginning and end with, you know, that promise of dinosaurs and modern day wildlife and humans living together and experiencing each other. And no, let's not set the movie like that. Also the final battle between the two giant dinosaurs, the Giganotosaurus and the T-Rex felt shoehorned in like they were like oh we need a giant battle at the end let's let's do that it didn't have proper build up or not nearly as good as some of the others well actually no i think the fatality at the end with the therizinosaurus or whatever with the big claws was pretty cool anyway yeah it's a fun movie does it live up to being the capper to a whole franchise that started in the 90s no but it's still like super fun there's a lot of awesome dinosaur sequences and scenes and thrills and they get into a lot of obscure dinosaurs that are cool to see and many people are seeing for the first time which is pretty cool most of the acting's great and characters are great and stuff there's just some pacing issues some fails at humor and a little bit too much fan service trying to get the audience like super excited like this is the end game of all things but it's i don't think it measures up and the plot has nothing to do with dinosaurs which is the dumbest thing in the world literally you could do the whole two main plots of this movie and there's could be no dinosaurs involved. Jurassic World Dominion, I give a seven. Uh, there's so many great cool parts, but just the main, the main part of the whole movie just messes it up for me. So what do you think of Jurassic World Dominion? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you somewhere in the middle? Please comment below and like the video and subscribe per usual. Anyway, I'm probably gonna go read some more dinosaur books, you know, brush up on my dinosaur knowledge and names and weird long names and maybe finally read these books. Finally, I got these two Christmas one year and never read them. I need to get back to reading. There's literally, oh my gosh, there's a, a napkin as a bookmark. Shows how I am as a reader. <laughs> but yeah, 